On this Pioneer Tech edition of Smart Robots Review, we're going to look at Maisie, an amazing STEM education tool designed for middle and high school students. Stay with me, this is going to be great. Welcome to Smart Robots Review. Hey everyone, welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world. I'm your host Elias and it's great to have you here as usual. Today is a Pioneer Tech edition of the show and I'm going to be spotlighting Maisie, a educational robotic system designed to expose middle and high school students to the concepts of engineering. With robotics and automation already beginning to shape our future, we need more innovations like this in the classroom as soon as possible. The co-founders behind this concept have started a crowdfunding campaign to raise the funds for their project, but they will need your help. To find out more, I reached out to Nicholas Tronkale, Executive Director and Co-Founder of Nexus Valley Solutions, who is also a faculty member of the Department of Physics and Electrical Engineering at the University of Scranton. And now I'm very pleased to be joined by Nicholas Tronkale here on the show to tell us about Maisie. So Nick, welcome. Tell me about Maisie, tell me about the campaign and how you got started. So back in October, my business partner and I, we started a company called Nexus Valley Solutions. And what our company does is we create educational technology and the curriculum that goes with it uh, to provide STEAM education to public, private schools, undergraduate uh, schools, pretty much anyone who wants to implement a STEAM course at you know their university or school. So right now we have what we're calling our flagship STEAM package, which is a robotic solution involving a robot that we call Maisie. So I don't know if you have pictures of Maisie, but I kind of have one here in the picture. So we kind of have a nice little colorful one here. And in order to get our startup company up and running, we decided to have a Kickstarter campaign uh, where people can pledge to earn some different rewards. Some as uh, simple as t-shirts and pop sockets. But some of the rewards include Maisie, the autonomous robot, and an education guide that they could use to teach themselves Python programming, algorith algorithm development, and different topics like that that involve STEAM. What makes our company unique is that our STEAM cor courses incorporate all subcategories of STEAM, so science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Some schools might have courses like an intro to engineering course or physics and chemistry classes, and they might say, oh, well, we have a STEAM curriculum because we have courses that meet some categories of STEAM, where we think we're different because each course that we create incorporates each subcategory. Okay, how did you get here? Uh, what inspired you to get started with uh, with this project? Back in 2013, um, and oh, by the way, I'm also a faculty member at the University of Scranton. So back in 2013, uh, I had developed a new course called Foundations of Physics and Engineering, and this course had had a couple different um, outcomes. Uh, one being we wanted to get our students more interested in the majors uh, that we were offering. So we offer electrical and computer engineering uh, programs at Scranton. Uh, I saw a lot of strange things. People were coming into Scranton majoring in these engineering programs and they didn't really know what engineering was, which I thought was strange. I mean, how do you choose a major like engineering when you come to college? and not know what it was. So part of this course was to introduce them to the fun sides of engineering. So part of the course involved Python programming, and they also used this Maisie robot um, as a, a capstone project in the course where this robot has to navigate uh, what we were calling a micromouse maze. Um, and the micromouse maze is uh, unique to the IEEE, student activities conferences and they have these micro mouse competitions all over the world so what we do in the class is we have our own class competition and then the winner of that competition competes in our local IEEE region uh, so that's sort of where all of this started with this this new foundations of physics and engineering course where, where I'm a faculty member so we decided since it was so successful here why not try to bring that same success into middle and high school? Because I think if, if, if we want to have more engineers in the world and uh, decrease the STEM skills gap, we have to start engineering these STEAM skills 
earlier in students' lives. I really do and think... And identifying if they're interested. Absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many students we have come to the University of Scranton who major in engineering and then they show up in some of these classes and they're just, they just don't like it. They don't even know what it is. So why not have courses in you know early high school or even late middle school where they're introduced to these steam topics like engineering like the different sciences and technology because maybe people are interested but they just don't know what it's all about because right. they're not experienced right. they don't have any experience so tell me about actually you know what let's watch the video that you put out there it's a nice little video and then walk me through it tell me what i'm, what I'm gonna be seeing so i'm gonna show my screen here real quick you got it. Yeah, so here comes Maisie coming down uh, one section of a maze. There's some cool rock music playing in the background. Um, so the first part of this video is my business partner, Nathan Williams, and he's talking about some of the struggles that he had when he first took a computer science class. He had a hard time visualizing computer programming constructs like loops, uh, decisions, uh, functions. So what Maisie allows a student to do, it allows a student to visualize those different, those different constructs in a physical way by watching the robot navigate this maze. You can see that it has to make a decision to a side of the maze. So Nate had a lot of trouble when he took these courses in college, so he helped develop this new way of um, visualizing programming constructs. So right here, okay. I'm actually describing okay. some of what I talked about earlier, where we need to get STEAM and STEAM topics into the lives of students earlier in their careers rather than later. And I'm just explaining that, you know, we really should get, get those skills earlier. Now this part of the video I think is the most important because it goes through student testimonials. These are students who actually have gone through the course I mentioned earlier at the University of Scranton. So this person right here, this is Natalie. She went through this course last year and um, she was just describing the, 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 the pride that she felt at the end of the course when she put her robot into the maze and you know she was able to show her student, the rest of the students in the class what she was able to accomplish. This is Peter, another student of mine, saying that this was the most hands-on course he's had in college so far, and this includes courses like engineering and circuits labs. He thought this course is more hands-on even uh, compared to those courses. The next person we're going to see is Aubrey. She just finished the course and won the co course competition this past fall. Just talking about if this class was in high school, uh, it would just spread like wildfire. Everyone would want to take it. Now we're back to Natalie, and this is what I call, you know, I think Nat Natalie might get us some pledges on Kickstarter because what she's doing is off screen, she's watching a video of her micro mouse solving the maze at a student activities conference. So she's just describing what her feelings were like. She said her heart was pounding, so nervous that the robot wasn't going to make it to the center of the maze. So finally, the, uh, the robot does eventually make it to the center of the maze. And then this was actually the winning run. So I think this run might have taken a minute 15 from uh, the corner that you see in the far edge of the video. It navigating, self-navigating itself to the center of this maze. So then the, and she just describes the sense of very proud moment, you know, when she was competing against juniors and seniors from other big universities in our region and her only being a first year student at the time and just what a very proud moment that was for her so tell me about Maisie so if you if you're developing this system what is Maisie gonna come with you're gonna come with a set of uh, like a small maze what's it gonna come with the clip that you're seeing now, this is of what would be called a standard micro mouse maze. So it's a flat surface, there's holes where those white pegs can go actually into the ground, and then you can connect the walls and make a, you know, we developed, we developed a new system for making a maze. Um, it's essentially, so you don't have to, you can use any flat surface, and essentially the pegs clip onto the walls. So let's say you were to, you were to go to the Kickstarter campaign, and you wanted to pledge a certain amount that would give you one of these uh, autonomous robots we call Maisie. What you would get, you would get enough pegs and clips and walls so that you could make a three by three celled maze. So you can do all sorts of testing. And the biggest pledge on the Kickstarter will give you enough walls, clips and pegs to make a nine by nine cell maze. So in the picture right here, this would be an example of a five by three size maze for testing. 
So just for the Kickstarter, you would get a three by three cell base. Now for schools, if schools are interested in, in purchasing the package, we have several packages on our website um, and you would actually be getting, the schools would be getting a larger size maze so they can have their own horse competitions. The general package comes with uh, 10 mazy robots, all the hardware and everything associated with that. All the software we use is all free. We use, I don't know if you've heard of Anaconda before, so we use mm -hmm. the Spider IDE mm -hmm. uh, to program in Python. And then essentially how you would connect to Maisie, uh, Maisie u u utilizes a Raspberry Pi. So what we have the Pi do is, it's a Raspberry Pi A+, so we have a Wi-Fi dongle attached to its single USB port, and it broadcasts its own Wi-Fi network. So you connect to the Wi-Fi network, use SSH protocol to essentially terminal into the Raspberry Pi, and then you can control everything from that terminal. So you're wireless, wirelessly connected to Maisie, where you can kick off algorithms. There's also physical switches on top of Maisie that you can kick off different algorithms depending on, you know, if you wanted to have multiple al algorithms programmed on your robot. So are you going to provide, like, sample scenarios, scenarios for the instructors, the teachers at different levels to... Uh, Utilized in the classroom? Oh, absolutely. So the curriculum, if the school were to buy a package from us, they would get a 100, 180 day curriculum. Um, in Pennsylvania, so there's a 180 day requirement for schools. I'm not sure if that's consistent across the country, but you would get you would get a full full year course. If you taught, we have block scheduling in our local area where you would take a course for half of a year. We could manipulate it into a block scheduling. And even if there was an undergraduate institution that wanted to implement it, that as a course, we already have that ready to go. So for the Kickstarter, we're not specifically having schools pledge to the Kickstarter. But what we are doing is each time, if you if you pledged enough m uh, money for one of the rewards to get a Maisie robot, we're uh, going to give you a do-it-yourself education guide where you get a walkthrough uh, on Python, which we're calling a Python primer. Then uh, ba basic Maisie interfacing, so how do you connect to the Maisie, how do you manipulate the Linux terminal once you're connected to it. Uh, how do you control Maisie? How do you control all the hardware? How do you get sensing information from the boat robot? And then finally, basic algorithm development. So for the Kickstarter, somebody you know can pledge a certain amount of money and then they get Maisie, a do-it-yourself guide, and enough walls, clips, and, and um, uh, pegs to do all the testing and algorithm design that they would want to do. Great. Sounds like a well-thought-out package. Uh, well-thought-out well campaign, I should say. Can we talk about the technical side of Maisie a little bit? We have the... Um, I'll just put them up on the screen just so you can see them one time, but Maisie's all over the Kickstarter, so that's fine. So Maisie is uh, controlled by Raspberry Pi A+. We have a custom PCB shield that we've designed that sits right on top of it. So you can kind of see it in this picture here. We uh, have a custom PCB. And then for movement, it's two DC motors, but attached to a secondary shaft on the DC motor, we have magnetic rotary encoders, so you can actually track distance with the DC motors. And then there's actually seven different sensors on the Maisie. We have five uh, digital distance sensors. So on the front, there's one 10 centimeter sensor to test you know, obstructions in the front. There's two 10 centimeters on the sides to look for openings on either the right or left. And then there's two five centimeter distance sensors also on each side which could, uh, if you were inside of a maze, it would keep you from crashing into the wall. And then there's also, it's hard to see here just because they're at an angle, I'll try to do it. There's actually two analog range finders here. Um, so you could actually use digital sensors for movement and detection, or you can just use the two analog sensors or a combination of both. Um, and then the, you know, the movement is just two DC motors with the caster wheel on the front. So it's a, a pretty cool design, and um, you know we've been working with this for four years at my college. So we have plenty of data and evidence showing that this is a really nice education tool, and it's specifically for people who have never programmed anything before in their life. So if you're a beginner, this is an excellent tool for you. And even if you're an expert, or if you think you're an expert or an inter intermediate programmer, it's still fun to code algorithms into Maisie and then set her off in a maze to see what she can do. Oh, your timing is perfect, and I love this concept. The future is kind of laid out already for us. We know that jobs will be replaced. And it's time to get the right exposure to young children 
in science, technology, education, mathematics, art, mathematics, and uh, I, I love I love your concept. So, any final words? Say two things. Um, one thing I hear a lot is, you know, can a middle school or can a high school student handle this type of knowledge? I think I say that in my Kickstarter video. But but, but think about this: if we're gonna in, if we're gonna teach students skills in high school and in middle school that they, they could use for the rest of their life, why not teach them programming? I don't think programming is going anywhere. I think it's going to be around forever. Right. A lot of jobs right. are going to require right. it. So why not have? a middle school student or a high school student learn Python programming. That is a skill they can literally have on their resume for the rest of their life. And it'll, so with, that's the type of skills I think we should be teaching in high school and middle school. Skills that they could take with them to college so that they're more prepared. But then they can leave high school already having skills that they can transfer to a job. And I think that's p part of what we're all about. Yeah, it's outstanding. And I, I totally agree. I think uh, along with the basics, even in elementary school, start exposing them to basic concepts of uh, programming. Well, I got to tell you, Nick, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. I know you're very busy. Very busy. I know you're very busy. Good luck with the campaign. Good luck with the campaign. Thank you for the invite. We, we, we really appreciate it. And if anyone's really interested in supporting us, go to our Kickstarter site. It's nexusvalleysolutions.com forward slash Kickstarter. Excellent. And I'm going to include uh, the link to the Kickstarter and your website in the comment section of this video as well. And uh, I think I may become a supporter of the project as well. So. <laughs> oh, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank Thanks you, for Nick. having Thank me. You, Nick. Good Thank luck you, with the project. All right, have a good day.